Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video I'm going to be taking this old corroded Matchbox VW Combi Camper Van and I'm going to be making it into a diorama with a cherry blossom tree growing up through it. There were a couple of variations of this, they had different tops on them and this is the 34C variation with the pop top kind of thing going on there. They were produced from 1967 to 1968. This is a fairly worn example, it's missing a door there and there's some quite severe corrosion happened. You can see it's dissolved right through the casting. It's pretty common to find these old campers in fairly rough condition with the missing parts and they're a pretty popular one to restore but I'm not really going to be restoring it today. I'm going to take advantage of those corroded areas and the beat up state of it and I'm going to be making it look old and rusty so we'll crack on into it by taking the van apart. There's a couple of posts in the front to drill out and then I can pull off the base and the interior out and a couple more shallow tabs holding the windscreen in. Normally at this stage I would strip the metal with some paint stripper but I'm not actually going to bother with this one as it's just going to be a rusty old wreck. The parts are however pretty filthy so I give them a wash and some hot soapy water. Here they go, looking a little bit cleaner. Who knows what's happened to that casting there to dissolve it. Maybe something spilled on it. I'm not going to be using the wheels on this diorama. So I'll remove the mushroomed end of the axles with a straight burr on my rotary tool here and then I can take the wheels and axles off. Now I'm going to have my cherry tree coming up through the bottom of my van there and up through the hole in the top. So I'm going to have to make a hole in the bottom plate there for it to come through. I start by cutting some lines into the base with this cutting disc on my rotary tool. And once I'd cut in my lines, I could use some pliers to bend up the floor of the van. A couple of them broke off, but it's okay, I could glue them back on with some glue later. And there we go, there's our hole burst up through the floor of the van. Now I'm going to paint both these parts a rusty texture, begin with a brown primer. And then they were given light speckly coats of rust effect and dark red brown. I should have actually hit them with a varnish at this point, you'll see why shortly, but it still ended up okay, so 
take a note of that. So I wanted the top of my fan to be white. I've just masked it off here and then I'm going to apply some really heavy salt chipping. Just paint on a little bit of water and isopropyl alcohol and then I'm going to shake on my salt here. I then airbrushed it white and I'm just removing my masking here. As you can see it's pulled off a lot of my rust paint that I put on earlier. So that was a bit disappointing if I had to put some varnish on it that wouldn't have happened. And I'm just brushing away the salt here. This will take a lot of the paint with it and expose the rust underneath giving it that chippy worn out paint effect. So there's our chipped white paint on the top of the van. I'm just going to have to paint in my rusty panelling again by hand. Now I wanted blue for the lower part of the van so I'm just going to use a little bit of cotton wadding here or you could use a bit of sponge and I'm just going to dot on a few patches of blue paint. Next I use some chrome to paint in a few of the details here and there. The bumpers, I'm going to do a pretty patchy job like it's all been rusted through under the chrome. And finally I added some more rust using some ground up pastels and I've just dissolved them in a little bit of isopropyl and I'm going to paint them on here and there. There's a couple of different shades I'm using. And then once I was happy with this, I fixed it all with a matte varnish. Next I'm going to move on and start making the tree. For this I'm just going to use some wire. This is just some cheap soft florist wire that I've bought. I've put a couple of nails here into a board, they're about six and a half inches apart and I'm just going to wrap my wire round and round and round until I get, I don't know, I think it was about 30 strands of wire. So that would be wrapping it round 15 times. And here is our bundle of wire. Now I'm just going to cut through one end of it. So now we've got 30 strands of wire and they're bent in the middle there. Now I'm going to start twisting them into the shape of the tree. So I'll begin with a couple of twists. And I'm leaving an inch, inch and a half loop at the bottom which is going to be our roots. So there we go, a couple of twists round. And I'm leaving a V up the top there, that's going to be our branches.
Next I'm going to separate the loop in the bottom into three separate loops. And then I'll start putting a couple of twists in each of these. There we go, there's our three roots there. Next, before it got too complicated, I put it through the van. As you can see, one of the branches and one of the roots is going through the side door there. The other main trunk going up through the roof and the other two roots going out the other side underneath the van. Next, I cut each of the root loops Then I took each of these bunches of wire and give them a couple of twists and then I separate that in half again and give each of those bundles a couple of twists and so on and so forth and this will make your roots getting progressively smaller and then you can sort of bend them around into the shapes that you want. And there you can see I've done one of the roots there and I can keep going and make another one here. If it all looks a little bit fiddly, that's because it is, and you'll probably end up jabbing your fingers a few times with the wires. But just be patient and you'll get there in the end. Here we can see I've finished a couple of the roots there, I've just got one more to go. I tried to keep the door in place but they ended up popping off so much bending and fiddling around. And there's the third main route finished. You can see them all spread out under the van there. And now I move on and do basically the same thing to make all of the branches. And so here is the skeleton of my tree made out of wire. This whole process took maybe an hour and a half. So the next thing I'm going to have to do is try and fill her up all of the wire there as I don't want the tree to look too much like just wound wire. Starting out with some filler here and I'm just going to patiently paste it on everywhere that I can over the tree trunk trying to fill in as much of the wire texture as I can. And I'm also trying to avoid getting too much of the filler on the van. And here it is after the filler 
has dried the next step I'm going to do is to paint it with a mixture of burnt umber acrylic paint PVA glue and sifted dirt this will help to fill a more of the texture of the tree and it will also give it a rough texture from the dirt when it dries Here we go after our dirt paint layer is dried and I'll just finish it off with another layer of brown paint. And here it is after the paint layer has dried. Oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. If you wanted a dead looking tree, you could just leave it here pretty much. Just gonna give it a dry brushing of gray paint here. This will bring out some of the details a little bit. Next to move on and start making a base to sit it on. Here I've cut out a little base out of foam. I'm gonna be sitting my van on top of this. I've got a selection of plaster rocks I've made here. And I'll just use my hot glue gun to glue some of them on around my little hillock. If you don't have plaster moulds to make stones etc you can use just some big chunky pine bark to make some cool looking stones. You just have to paint over it and give it a good dry brushing. And here it is with all the stones glued in place. Next I'm going to build up around this with some spackling filler. And this was left overnight to set. Here it is, it's nice and hard now. Now I'm gonna have to make a base to fit the roots of my tree here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of space under them. So the way I'm gonna do this is with some paper mache, basically. I'm gonna take a little bit of toilet paper here just put it on top there and then I'm wetting it down with a mixture of PVA glue and water and I'm just going to make it really wet and really mushy
I'll just test to fit my van and tree there. There's a few more gaps I could do with a little bit more paper mache. And then once I have a sufficient amount of mushy paper there, I'm going to press my roots of my van into it quite firmly so that it makes an indentation where they're all going to sit. And then I left this to dry. And here it is, once it's all dried solid with the indentations where my roots are going to go in there. Next I painted all of the stones with a black wash. This was just made out of some water and a few drops of black paint. And this was followed with a blue wash. And then once these had dried, I gave them all a dry brushing with some white paint. Next I painted all the rest of it brown. Once this brown paint had dried it was time to apply some dirt all over it. So I'm going to paint all of the brown areas with some PVA glue here. And then I sprinkle on some dried dirt. This is from my garden. I've dried it out in the oven and then sifted it until it's quite fine. And I'm just going to sprinkle it all over the glue and it'll stick on there and I can just tap off the excess. So there's all our glued areas covered with the dirt. And next I give it all a spray with some scenic cement. This is just a thin mixture of PVA glue, matte varnish and water. Once this had all dried, I could glue my van and tree in place. Just using a splodge of tacky glue there and put my van in place there. As you can see, there's still a little bit of gap under those roots. So to fill that up, I'm going to use a really thick mixture of PVA glue and my dried dirt. And I'm just going to paint it in under or around the roots there. And here it is a while later after all of that has dried. You can see it's nicely in place there on top of the mound. Now I'm going to start adding some grass. I'm going to start with some scatter grass. It's a really short, like two millimeter stuff that you can just sprinkle on. I'm using a couple of different blends of it. So first of all, I'm using a darker blend. I'm just going to paint all around the bottom of the diorama. 
and I'm sprinkling on my darker blend of scatter grass all over the glue here. And then I painted all the rest of the exposed dirt areas with some more glue. And I'm going to sprinkle on a lighter blend of scatter grass, which has a lot of flowers in it. I'm using mostly knock grass blends for this diorama. So there's all my glue applied again and I'm just sprinkling on my flowery lighter scatter grass blend. And then this was left for an hour or two to dry and then it was time to apply some static grass. Again I'm going to use a few different blends. So I'm beginning with some patches of browner grass. And I'm just painting on my glue where I want these patches to be. It really is best when you're using static grass to have a lot of variation in the lengths and the colors it helps to make it look a lot more realistic and I'm just applying some six millimeter beige grass here this is like the color of dead grass And then on top of that, just to fill in between the longer beige grass, I'm using a two millimeter winter blend. So there's my browner patches. Now I'm gonna paint on some more areas of glue for my next grass blend. This one was a knock wild grass blend, wild grass meadow I think it is. And this process was repeated one last time with another knock blend called cow pasture. Next I used a little bit of super glue to glue this broken piece of the roof on and also the door that had come off earlier on. Now it was time to add some finer branches to my tree. I'm going to be using some sea foam to make the finer branches. I've just painted it with some burnt umber acrylic paint. And then I break it up into little bits. And I'm just using some tacky glue to glue it onto my wire tree trunk. And here it is a while later once I've glued on all of my smaller branches and let them dry. Probably took me about an hour to glue all of those on. Next I'm going to add a little bit of foliage. Excuse my bad filming here but I'm just using a brush to paint on a little bit of watered down PVA. Normally you could use a spray adhesive to do this but I can't in this situation. So here I am sprinkling a little bit of foliage flock over my glue there. I just wanted a light coat of foliage to mimic the spring growth of a cherry tree. You don't really have the full leaves yet. And now to make my cherry blossom I've just blended up some white sponge here. And I've just put a drop of pink paint in it. And I'm going to give a good rub up here. And this will give me a blend of 
blocking that's sort of I've got different shades of light pink and then I just repeated the process of painting on some paint and then applying the flocking so there we go that's all the steps I did to make my cherry tree growing through my VW camper van diorama just before we take a look at the finished item let's just have a quick look back at what we started with our worn out corroded old Volkswagen camper who knows what this little toy has gone through since it was made in the 60s it's certainly seen better days so let's see if we can give it a nice retirement rusting away under a cherry tree and here it is our finished diorama a pink blossoming cherry tree growing up through a rusty old Volkswagen camper I've also added some flowers there and some little mushrooms and a few little bushes growing around. This was probably one of the more tricky projects I've done. I didn't really know how I was going to do it when I started out and I'm pretty happy with the result. I think it looks really cool. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Before I sign out I'll just say welcome to all of my new subscribers and say a massive thanks to everyone for the awesome comments and likes on my videos and extra huge thanks to my awesome Patreon supporters they help to support the channel through Patreon if you'd like to join them and help out as well you can check out my Patreon page there's a link in the description below you get your name in the credits at the end of the videos and you also get access to a little bit of extra content. Thanks heaps for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe and click the bell. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.